Hey everyone, hope you're all well today. Uh, just waiting for Saga to join me and we're going to get started talking about relationships. And here's the man. I'm now. Hey Ravi, hey Dimple, hey Mary, how are you? Add him on. Anytime now, Saga. Hope everyone's having a pretty awesome Saturday afternoon. Hey, Lisa. Where is Saga? We were slightly late due to a couple of technical issues. <coughs> Saga's in. Uh, not going to throw him under the bus at all. <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's see if we can't get him back. Hopefully he's paid his internet bills. Samit, how's it going? Sirun, nice, nice to see you here. Hey, Karen. Hey, Krishna. Happy bank holiday to everyone in the UK. I see you. Hey, Gerge. Has anyone up to anything for this weekend? Any plans for the bank holiday? The weather is actually pretty good, um, which surprisingly was not what we expected given what the Met Office were talking about earlier. Hey, Saga, let's try adding you one more time. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's try again. Carl, what's happening? Andrea, hey, how are you? Hey, Ambika. Let's give this. Oh, what's happening here? Rain in New Zealand, driving with grandkids. Olika, how's it going? Alrighty, let's see what's happening with Saga. Saga, I can see that you're there. Clicked on approve. Just see if there's anything that you need to click. You're a DJ, you're good with buttons. You should be able to figure this out. That's right, yeah, we had hell, rain and silence. Mad. Like went out to the shops to get some milk and got absolutely bombarded, good. All right, let's give it one more go. I'm just going to end this now and then just check back in. Let's give it one more go and see what's happening there. And if not, we're just going to end and kick start. There we go. Let's try now. Aha! Hello. You made it. I think. I thought you'd be good with buttons. Social media, mate. Social media. <laughs> Live on it every right. day and so it doesn't just, deliver uh, what we want it to, right? Yeah, perfect. Loud and clear. <laughs> 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 Spend all of our lives on it and then when we need it to do something, it bloody doesn't work. <laughs> We've just done a test and it worked, didn't it? I oh, know. Well, let, let, let's not talk about the test. Um, <laughs> Right. Amazing. Hey, so yeah, no, just uh, I was just saying some hellos. So we've got people from from India, from Australia, from the Amazing. US, from Ilford. Hello to everyone, <laughs> and thank quarter. you, thank you for joining. Amazing, amazing. To say for your hello, thank hey, you very much for uh, you know uh, sort of inviting you on this platform. No, you're very welcome, dude. I think when, when I was thinking about like what I wanted to talk about next and just the kind of stuff, and, and I suppose it comes back to some of the conversations we've had about, you know, with, with what you do for, for clients and weddings and what I do in coaching. And just when we talk about relationships, I think what really showed up for me was that I think a lot of us have just got the idea of a relationship wrong. And in a sense of what's been prescribed by what we see everywhere from what people and whatever influences have is that I don't, I got a sense that most people didn't really know what they wanted. 
Correct, and yeah. of making decisions based off of half the truth. And yeah. lives, not just of the people that are involved in the relationship, but extended families, and particularly in our culture, um, children that are involved. Like the, There's a whole sort of undercurrent of stuff that no one really talks about, but it's kind yeah. of there. It's like the elephant in the room. And, you know, I thought it'd be a perfect conversation to have with you in terms of, you know, I know what you do, you know, in the build up to some of the weddings that you, that you create and some of the conversations that you have with people. And I think that in itself is, is pretty ballsy for you to even have some of these conversations because on one hand, it's your business. Yes. But from the purest, with the purest intention, I think what you're, what you've been doing has been phenomenal. So um, I think, you know, from my perspective, I think what I would like to cover with you is just how do relationships work? Like, where does it start off to the point where they're ready to commit, get married? But then what are the internal and the external factors that really play into that? So, over to you, if you introduce yourself to everyone, and uh, yeah. let's dive in. No, it is. It's true. Thanks for that. So, I'm Sagar, um, and the reason I wanted, and I'm so um, grateful to Viraj for having me uh, on his Facebook Live, is because... I was I, w I was always thinking of doing this live on relationships and it was just on the back of all the weddings that I do and it's so weird because I get to I get to meet all my clients and I sort of build such a sort of uh, a, a sort of a solid foundation a solid relationship because what I don't want is when I'm, having, when I'm actually doing their wedding I want my couples to chill and, and actually chill and not stress and it's so weird because I see them from when they're starting to plan their wedding. And then as time goes by, you know, I see them a week before their wedding and it's that the entire attitude has changed. And, you know, it's, it's all, I'm not saying, you know, to people, oh, you know, think before you get married. That's not the reason for this live. It is, I think people forget why they're getting married and, and something that proves that is, you know, when I ask my couples at, um, a week before their wedding and I'm like, you know, I might just send them a quick message saying, um, hello, you know, uh, one week to your wedding. Yippee. You know, it's just something so simple. And the response that I get back is I just want this to be over. And it makes me think because I'm like your wedding celebrations haven't even started. And. I think I'm more excited about your wedding than you are. And it's so weird because that's, that should be the lead up of actually all the celebrations. And I realized that when I actually do the wedding ceremonies, how, you know, how sort of, uh, what should, what's the word I'm looking for? They are actually not interested. They're mm. so exhausted. It's about completing it, the formality of it really, isn't it? Correct. And I think, what happens, it's not to do with, it's not the couple themselves. I think what happens is so many external input that they forget why they're getting married in the first place. And then what mm. happens is they are now getting married for everyone else, which is a shame because you don't then enjoy your own wedding and you tend to do something just because, just to shut people, I mean, sorry, mind my language, but just to shut people up what happens is people just think, okay, you know what? Parents want this. Okay, what? Uncle wants this. Let's just do it. And then it's yeah. not your weddings. Um, yeah. and, and, and again, this is, I know I do about 50 weddings a year. And I would say 90% of the couples, it's the same reaction <laughs> that I get. And you won't believe, I, in my initial um, meetings now, I actually tell my couples, you know, and this is not me being harsh. This is not me saying, don't listen to your parents. It's me just being real to say, you know what? Parents are parents. Listen to them. But it's your wedding at the end of the day. And if you don't sort of get that drilled in, you are going to be doing everything for everyone else. And one of the things, social media is an amazing platform when you're doing things like this. The mm. one thing that it does have a downfall on is when people are comparing each other's weddings thinking that I don't have this and I should have that or my cousin had this, so I need that. That You don't need nothing. Yeah. If you want to do a wedding in your back garden, do it. You know, there's no... I, I've known a wedding to have a reception in a Pizza Hut buffet. 
In fact, oh. they had the ceremony, hired out the restaurant, and everyone had a buffet and had a great time. Yeah. No. And, and I think and, that's, the, that's their wedding. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was the thing. It was like, what? How could you? Like, this is, like, not the way it's done. But the couple were like, but this is what we want to do. Like, we all just want to chill. It, it's affordable, which, you know, is what it is. But at the same time, it was like, we just don't want the hassle. We just want people to have some fun and actually enjoy the company of everyone there versus the running around of it all. And I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head earlier was that what initially starts off as a wedding for two people who want to solidify their relationship, hopefully for the right intentions to take it further, it then becomes this sort of juggernaut snowball where everyone with the right intentions, I do believe for the most part, but wants to have an input. And I think the problem is that I feel that the couple within themselves still don't necessarily know what they want. And then they get pulled in different directions from someone saying, you should do this. You should have this many people. You should have that. And also this whole idea, and, and I suppose in, in a good way for you, this whole institution that marriage has become, that it's not just the ceremony, it's, it's the grandeur, it's the build-up, it's the events, it's the before, the during, but no one really focuses on the after, because once the wedding's done, every, you know, everyone's had their thing, the couple are now kind of, have kind of gone through the stress of it just to get there, and then it's like, well, now what? Now we've got to figure out how we're going to live with each other for the rest of our lives if they've not done that before. Yeah, and... I think you're right. Um, I mean, I personally think, and I uh, let's hope things are moving forward in the next generation, but I feel that um, people should actually try to live with their partners um, beforehand. Um, and I think it'll make such a big difference. I know quite a few people who have, lived out before whether it's two years three years and then have decided to get married and i know for a fact that if they had got married without living together again you know there's no names here but i know for a fact they wouldn't have lasted you know mm. and that's because of the, the, the complete opposite there you know and yes they, they've learned to understand each other's behaviors um, and how you're dealing with it, you know. And I think another thing is I've realised is and, and is people tend to not communicate now. So mm. what happens is when there's an issue, someone talks about it within the couple. One couple just doesn't, you know, one of the guys or, or girls, should I say, sorry, guys or girls, they don't want to argue. Not the boat. So, yeah, so the easiest way is is to brush it off. Yeah, um, and there's only now, so much you can brush off. <laughs> yeah, and and I suppose that so I think there's ma there's many different facets to it. So let's let's get to what happens before the couple choose to get married. And you know, this is we are whether it's heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, people are people, and just the whole idea of being in a relationship. How does it get from you know the initial attraction to how do you work out each other's competencies and all that stuff to the to the point where you want to establish compatibility. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the step that gets missed, is that the attraction is there. You know, whether that's someone's attracted to someone's physical attributes, their financial attributes, their mindset, whatever it is, there's something links two people together. And that's, that's the spark that starts the relationship off. But then I think where it, from what I've observed and from what I've, what I've kind of seen is that in that second stage, I think that's where people are expecting someone to fill a gap for them without necessarily doing the work for themselves. And what I mean by that is this is where I feel that there's a lot of unsaid communication where there's an expectation that someone should do this because there was the initial attraction and that's what brought two people together. Yeah. But that's just one element of it. Just because you're attracted to someone doesn't mean that they're going to be capable to do something or yeah. actually handle a particular situation for you. Or are you even communicating it in a way that the other person actually is doing it the way you want them to do it? Yeah. And I think that that's the kind of... Um, those are the initial embers that really can potentially spark the wildfire later. When the pressure really gets on, when it's now about, you know solidifying that relationship and now you're going to do this for a lifetime i feel that 
people I haven't necessarily don't necessarily know what it is they actually want and expect someone else to figure that out for them. And if they're not, that's where that frustration comes in because it's these unsaid communication, undelivered, un- undelivered communications and these unsaid expectations that are not getting met. Yeah. And that in itself begins to sort of cause the initial cracks. No, I, I think you've, yeah, you've completely hit that, that the point. You know, and I, again, uh, this is where I, I, I personally think that couples need to not just communicate. You know, one thing I've said, and this is a personal experience, is um, I and I always put, I always spread this to couples. You know, it's so weird. Like you've got the attraction, you're how weird is it when you're going out you can be going out for seven eight years and it is like the best feeling amazing feeling that you've had you're still a couple okay and now it's and and this is through experience so you're still a couple and you're having you're not you're not chasing anymore now Mm. all of a sudden i realized that whoever asks whoever out that day is when everything changes. Now, I'm not saying it shouldn't change, but that's when the expectations rise to the next level. Yeah. And and I see a lot of couples, um, unfortunately, where they've been together for eight years, not actually going out. They are going out, but they are actually not going out in terms of there's no defined definition that they're going out. And the person has asked someone out after eight years and they've only lasted a month. And you think, how's that possible? Because yeah. you were together for eight years. You actually thought, all right, you know what? This person's for me. And within a month, it finished. Now, that's where I would, this is why, and I, and I think this is where I want to stress that point, is why I think people need to forget I'm not saying forget the expectations. You know, I mean, for me, I've, there's two words that I've actually completely removed from my vocab, as you know, from my of previous lives, is expectations and judgment. And I think that's two of the things that are, is a killer because that's when your ego, I, t- I think, tends to kick in. You know what to do is right, but unfortunately, we don't do it because our ego kicks in and you always think what everyone else is going to think first before what makes you happy. And you know what's going to yeah. make you happy. But unfortunately, I mean, I do agree, Viraj, because... Yeah, I think, think what's, what's right and what's the truth is also subjective individually as well. And I think that's therein lies the problem is that you could have a number of people that all have a truth. Yeah. But there's no, no way of... People just kind of, I, I suppose it's, it is to avoid the confrontation of it, but at the same time, I think, I think that's important to actually say, look, this is just how I see things. These are, you're right, expectations isn't a word I like either, but I think these are, you know, agreements is a better word. Like, yeah. in this situation, let's have an agreement that this is, this is how it goes here and this is how it goes there, rather yeah. than just saying, I expect you to do this when you're around certain people. Now, yeah. straight away, you've set someone else up to fail. Yeah. And that but person's I, not going to do it because he's no. been told. He or she's been told. <laughs> yeah. and, and, they're in, and then it's like, well, you know, you, and then the other person's to blame because they didn't do the exact one specific thing that they had to do. Correct. But then you just lose all perspective of that. And I think, that's, and I think, that, and I think that expectation then just becomes unhealthy because you then, you're, the way you relate to that other person begins to diminish because, oh, they never meet my expectations. And you know, yeah. that kind of talk starts to come in. And I think when you're talking like that, you're putting that out into the relationship. So guess what you're going to get back? You're going to get back more of the same. Yeah. And that then gets magnified when you have all these other elements into it. And I think when you take a step back and look at it, and, and I think this comes down to, individuals really knowing themselves as well and that's a whole nother conversation but just let's say if you know internally how you can make yourself happy another person in your life that you form a relationship with is just going to elevate you they shouldn't be there to 
fill in the missing pieces of your jigsaw puzzle because yeah. they're going to put in their pieces. They're not your pieces. Yeah, no, I agree. And then you're trying to put square pegs into round holes yeah. and that just doesn't work. And, you know, I think life in general is the way I see it is everyone's an individual on a particular journey. And in a relationship, you just have two particular individuals doing their individual journeys together. Yeah. And, and sometimes some people will grow. That doesn't necessarily mean they grow apart. But then that in turn means that, okay, if someone is growing, how can they help elevate the other person in the relationship? And if that other person isn't willing to elevate or you know, stick to the path that they're on, you just have to accept that that's just their choice. And just because you do something, you can't expect the other person to do it. And I think that that's where I feel and what I see is that a lot of people do struggle a little bit in that it's trying to have it all, but then at the same time not allowing it room to breathe. Yeah. And no. sometimes relationships, you know, this whole notion it should be 50-50, I think is also quite fake because there are going to be times where it is going to be 80-20. It is going to be 70-30 you're going to have these things, but it all adds to 100%. Correct. And you just have to roll with it. You can't just have this sort of rigidity and this fixed mindset of, I do this, therefore you must do this. Yeah. But sometimes some, some person can do more. So let's say if someone does 75% of the work in the relationship, they, all they may need is that final 25% that the other person can bring them, and they're happy with that. They're cool with that. Yeah. But Yeah, yeah. It's knowing what it is that you want and what you need from a relationship first. And in knowing that, you can then, when you have this initial attraction with someone and then you get to know them, you can then start to see, okay, do you know what? This rela if this were to go further, is this person actually the right person? I may like them, I may love them, they may look great, blah, blah, blah. But when you're talking 20, 30, 40 years down the road, and yeah. also then the potential to introduce a family into that, is this going to work? And the truth is we never know the total answer, but we can pretty much get a good gut feel of it, provided we're being honest to ourselves. And I, and I think that's exactly what I was going to say. I think, one, you have to be honest with yourselves and uh, yourself. And I think the it's, it's, it's being honest with yourself, but also you need to know what you want. I think a lot of people rush into relationships and it's, it's whether it's marriage or girlfriend, boyfriend or whatever it is. I think a lot of people rush into relationships is because that's all they know. And unfortunately with the Asian culture, you know, with the, especially the Indian culture, you know, we're, we don't know any different. And I, and I think it's because, and it's still being taught that way that, Oh my God, you know, you're 28 or you're 38 or you're 35 Whatever you are, you yeah, should have a relationship get timeline. Let's get the chart out. And and, by and, yeah, this moon, and I think <laughs> you should have. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's, and, and that's the wrong reason. And I, yeah. you know, again, I'm saying this not just through experience. I, I just want to say, I think all of that stuff is valid because I think it's a good guide just because it is designed to help with compatibility, but the, it doesn't take into account the individualism of the two people. Correct. So I think and, that stuff is great to set people and connect people. But just because something looks good on paper, yeah. it may not necessarily translate to reality. So it's not to negate you know, the astrological stuff and all that stuff. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years and okay. it has worked. But it's not the final all bells, whistles answer that, right, two plus two, four, done. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. No, yeah, no, it's and I, and I, no, 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 that's, uh, do you know what, and I, I, all of these things that I'm, we're stating, you know, I, it, there's nothing fixed, I'm saying, you know, it's, it's, it's what it's been said and what I see, and it's because people are rushing into things sometimes, you know, that I realise that their relationships don't last that long, because they've rushed, again, this all comes down to, why are you getting married? Are you getting yeah. married because you want to get married the way you want to? And... Or are you going out with someone and rushing into this because you want to or because you've been told to? That's the difference. Yeah. If you're if you want to do something, then it's going to work. But if you're doing it because you're getting pressured by people, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter how much you try in the back of your mind. The only thing you're going to keep thinking about 
okay, I've done this because of this person. Now what is the next stage? And yes. then all you're going to ask for is validation. From yes, your to course. reinforce a belief <laughs> yeah. which has come from a lack of something in the past. And you're just continually fueling that validation versus building what's there in front of you right now. And it's never going to work. No. Because you're always going to... You're living in the past. Validation. Correct. Yeah. Always, you're always going to do that. And you're not going to be happy because then if you're not communicating and then if you start having an argument, you're not going to try and find validation anymore. You're just going to forget you're it. You're just going to fight your I corner. Deal with this, correct. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Just a few and, comments here. Sachin's just saying that yeah. the Asian view of relationships are a very linear and binary way of thinking. Uh, Siri, hey, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Mira, totally agree. Uh, Lucia, I think the reason why so many relationships fall apart is because when, we, when it comes to a misunderstanding, they're trying to prove who is right instead of realizing that it doesn't matter. And what matters is the choice to work it out and talk about the issue. I mean, that's absolutely bang on. And yeah, wedding is a ceremony where marriage is two people working together as a team. I think that's so, so true. So, so true. Um, do, all right, here's a question for you. Does anyone actually know what relationship actually means? Because we say we're in a relationship, <laughs> but what does it actually mean, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't think they know. I don't, so, yeah. I, I've got out my old dictionary. Yeah. And relationship actually means the way in which two or more people or things are connected or a state of being connected. And it just expands into saying the way in which two or more groups of people regard and behave towards each other. Amazing. Right. So at surface level, I'm in a relationship. Wonderful. How are you behaving with each other? What's the connection? What's the link? Like, do we even go beyond no. the title but actually how are you connected with someone is it you know and I think that is now going to lead us into what we're going to talk to but yeah this whole you know we have a relationship with everything the way something shows up for us you know whether it's how we regard and behave towards money or our fears or you know all that kind of stuff but in this context now taking it into into the marriage context you know, you've got to you've got to a position now where two people are about to commit to you know the rest of their lives together and you know this is now a husband wife husband husband wife wife however you want to call it yeah. you know two people are now committing to each other to live the rest of their life and they're going to have a ceremony mm -hmm. that's going to spiritually legally bind them. I hate that word. But yeah, it's, it's a ceremony. It's a ceremony that's going to bring two people, but also bring two families together as well. So you're now, the marriage itself is now actually building a much bigger relationship. And if anything yes. else, now creating, creating relationships, creating new meanings and new connections and, and all of that stuff. So what do you see when two people are about to get married, they come to you, they're talking about the wedding, how much of what they want to do actually happens versus what, how other people want, want them to do? Because I certainly totally get that, you know, parents, families, you know, community, they, the wedding is a big deal. And I think there's a tipping point between doing it right versus doing it for show. And at some point that line gets very blurred. So I'm going to hand it over to you to take over yeah. it from there. I think wedding trends as uh, overall, um, uh, you know, it's, it's changing year on year, you know, and I think couples are now doing what they want to do. Um, as if when, you know, sort of a couple of years ago, it was all about the, the parents and, and how they want it and, you know, the, the definitely the numbers are sort of uh, reducing, you know, where you had a thousand people wedding, you're now having 200 people weddings. But I think also people have realized that, you know, the, the there's nothing wrong with um, the, the Indian ceremony, but a lot of, uh, you know, people who are not, people who don't believe the Indian wedding ceremony, uh, you know, they, they are sort of moving away from doing the Indian wedding ceremony because, They've been told they need to do it. However, we're in the we're in the UK, so by law, the Indian wedding ceremony doesn't really do anything because you're not getting married in India. So 
you know, a lot of them now are doing their civil weddings, you know, because that's what they want to do. And then they do a big reception or, or whatever it is. And it's because I think people have realized that they want the nearest and dearest. There. Mm. And this is why the, the, the more weddings, I don't know if you realize, but a lot of them are doing destination weddings because the people that want to come, immediate family, friends and so on, they will be there, you know, and that's all that matters. And I think that's something personal to the couple. And, mm. and this is what I'm trying to get to is when I sort of go through the entire wedding ceremony, whether it's on, or the, whether it's the music or whether it's the Vedic scriptures, you know, I explain the ceremony and it's so weird because it gets people excited, but they don't know why, don't do an Indian wedding just because you're supposed to be doing an Indian wedding. Know why you're doing certain mantras. Know why you're doing certain rituals. Because there's a whole you know science that, actually behind that as well, which... Correct. Yeah. When you know that, it's so much more personal to you that you, know, you want to then do an Indian wedding. But again... This is why I tailor stuff to my couples. And it is changing, which is amazing, because I don't think people are doing things for other people anymore. I think what happens, they, going back to your question, I think they start with that. But for some reason, along the way, they lose their way again. Mm. And it all goes back as a vicious circle and goes back to what family want. Um, whether that's maybe because, and I don't blame parents, because I think what happens, parents are always going to be supportive of their children. Yeah, and it's, it's a big deal for the parents. The next generation. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? And I also think as well, it's, it's almost the parents want to be able to give the kids what they didn't have. And, and that's why they want to take control of it and say, yeah, you know what? There's an element of we didn't get to do this, but yes. also we want to include other people in this. But I think the communication isn't there between the couple first and foremost, to have that clarity on, A, what is it that they want to do? And then be able to manage and, I don't want to say delegate, but like just effectively communicate to the nearest and dearest. This, this is what we want to do. And also not have the rigidity in saying nothing else matters. This is how we're going to do it. Because you have to respect other people's opinion as well. And, yeah. and I think that healthy communication in finding again, not necessarily compromise, but that middle ground of, you know, family generationally, traditionally would like certain elements or certain, certain things to be a part of it. Mm. How can we make this work versus, oh my God, they're telling me to do this and they're telling me to do that. Because they, again, that's becoming the victim in the circumstance. But yes. yes, it's your wedding. And in the broader context, it's also the wedding of, other people it's families coming together and people are naturally going to be excited about that and and how do you navigate those conversations because i can imagine they get pretty tense do you know it's weird isn't it because i think yes a, a wedding is yes the celebration and you know it's a celebration it's, a, it's not just about the couple coming together it's about two families uniting as one right and I'm a firm believer in that. It is two families uniting as one. And, you know, you can see things have changed because where you used to have bride side sitting on this side and groom side sitting on this side now. And it's the one upmanship in the pre events as well. You can mix it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't, I, you know, and I think that's the way it should be. I, I mean, just touching on that, I'm just going to, uh, Veena uh, left a lovely message here. Indian wedding procedure has a meaning in it but people have spoiled it by making it lavish. <laughs> you, you, you are so right. I think um, I, I wouldn't say spoiled I it. I wouldn't I totally think... agree with that. I think no, more, I... more attention goes to the look versus the feel. And the feel of it is, you know, I remember back to, to mine was that I think I, I actually understood what was going on. So therefore... I wasn't necessarily as concerned about the look of it. Yeah. But I think that comes down to if the people that are there are looked into, and provided it's not too OTT, I think that's the healthy balance between it. Because yes, yeah, you do want to celebrate it and have these lovely flowers and flashy lights and all that kind of stuff. But, but I get that. I, I think that's true. I think with, with any wedding, not necessarily an Indian wedding, I think there's a difference between the intimacy of the wedding itself versus the overall look of it. 
Yeah, yeah, no, and it, there's nothing wrong it's with a great point, though. Yeah. yeah, it's a great point. There really isn't anything. And, yeah. and I think, I don't know, Vina, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what it is, is being lavish is not an issue. But if that's something you want to do, then do it. But don't do it because my cousin got married last year. She done this, so I need to beat her wedding. Don't do it because of that. Because then you're not going to enjoy your wedding. All your it's not about you. Yeah, competing against. I've I've got people who compete against their own siblings, and I actually will stop that conversation there. And I'm like, I, I don't understand why you're competing with siblings. And if that's how you're going to start planning your wedding ceremony, it's not going to happen. Then people realize that oh my god, we're married now. And we broke. Well, you should have thought about that first. <laughs> so again, there's there's nothing wrong with being lavish. If you've got the money, if you if you want to do it, do it. But do it because you want to do it, not because your parents want to do it, not because you, someone else done it and you think you need to beat them. A wedding is not a competition. Okay, getting married is not a competition. You know, I see people. Oh. We married seven years now, and someone will say, "Oh, well, we married ten years." Well, good. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know, that's there's numbers. <laughs> however, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stress this point. However, how do you know that the people that have been married for ten years, how do you know they're happy? Yeah, the seven-year couple, they must have amazing seven years. But how do you know that ten years, that only the first year has been happy, and nine years has been miserable? You don't know that because people do not share that. Yeah, you, you cannot you cannot source right? your outsource your unhappiness to a comparison to something else. You just can't. Like, you know, whether it's seven seven days, ten days, what, like whatever it is. Like, you're right. When you start to compare, that's a sign to you that okay, there's something there for me that I'm having to validate against something else. That it's just spent more did more been in it longer whatever it is like that that's totally external correct totally 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 external because you, why would you need to develop, why would you need to do that to feel a bit better about what you're doing now and I think and where does that come from because i do think that um, modern culture social media does tend to overhype things and there's this whole fairy tale marriage thing and all the bells and whistles and you know whether it's you know culture in asia or culture in in the west or what like it's this whole thing about you know and i think maybe that's what vino was alluding to in terms of like yeah. the lavishness of it that lavish has become more about the outward show rather than actually yeah. do you know what I am going to do this because this is something that I want to do because this is just yeah. something that I want to do, not to prove right. a point to anyone or anything. And in that scenario, go ahead and do it. Just be mindful and responsible about it. Yeah, no, no, correct. You know, it's, I, I, there's one saying that I say to all my couples and, it, and it's something I think I've read. or I've It wasn't don't do it, right? No, 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 no. It wasn't <laughs> don't do it. Do it, guys. Look, it is. <laughs> Just you know, do it. <laughs> it, it, it is amazing, and I, I'll tell you one thing: the especially the the Asian wedding, and of course, this live is not dedicated or at just for Asian weddings, but especially with with Asian weddings, and I'm sure you know with Jamaican weddings that I do and Jewish weddings, the 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 whole concept around it, the fun that that it brings, and and it brings everyone together. It's amazing. Um, so do it, you know, but remember why you're doing it. Then I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying rush into it, but do something. But um, there's one saying that I wanted to say was, um, sorry, guys, just one second, one second. Man right, in the mind, sorry. this guy. Yeah, yeah. You're always in the um, mind, you. <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing that um, I always say is remember that Parents, you know, this, the two people getting married is is you two as girl, boy, 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 girl, girl, right? And parents are always going to be parents. But unfortunately, you know, as time goes by, parents will go. And, you know, when you have your kids, you know, the kids will grow up and 
kids will find their partners and the kids will go. So the only two people that are going to be together forever is you two, whether it's girl, girl, boy, boy, girl, boy. So when you try and understand that, this is why I say don't do anything because of someone else, because everyone has their own little agenda, you know, and unfortunately you don't fit into that agenda sometimes. So, and that's what annoys people because I think, okay, we've done this because of them. Now we want this. Why are they not helping us with this? No one told you to do it the way they wanted to do it. And I know that's a bit deep and I know a lot of people might not like me saying that, but it is the truth, you know, and, and when you're honest with yourself in terms of, you know, why you're doing something, this is the reason I say don't do it because of anyone else, because people do move on, you know, and I don't know, Viraj, do you sort of agree with that or, I don't know. I think, so... yeah, no, you're right. I, I, I think it, it's definitely important to, to not step over someone else's opinion. Because yeah. that's, you know, there's just, they, you know, there's got to be that element of respect as well. That, you know, they're just saying something because it's from their perspective and maybe they just want to be heard or feel like they've had some kind of an input. And they, that's, that has to be respected for sure. Just, you know, but then it, it ultimately just comes down to the two individuals to look at it and say, okay, where do we want to go with this? Yeah. And again, have that agreement. And then as a team, say, right, we appreciate what you're saying and the numbers you want or what you want to do here and that and this and that. But taking it all into account, this is what we want to do. And we would like your support in making that happen. And I think yeah. that that is an indicator of the strength of that relationship. And I think that really needs to be the work that couples need to do. Because yeah. I find that even within that, and again, it's human nature. When the pressure gets on, it's fight or flight. And more often than not, we'll preserve ourselves first. It's just instinctive. Yeah, correct. And that, again, starts more cuts in the relationship of, okay, you now feel that this person, you didn't support me when we wanted this. And this is not what I wanted. Or those conversations, once they start to creep in. Yeah it then gets amplified through the wedding. But that yeah. stuff just stays unresolved. Yeah. On top of the other unresolved stuff that, you know, we all as individuals still work through. So when you now have that, you are now, it feels like you're now bound in a relationship where just in the process of getting married, you're associating the other person and saying, they didn't back me up. Yeah. And now that's, that's the validation trap. that You, you now look to reinforce that. And, and I think that's why yeah. a lot of, I mean, I've known people that literally have decided to break up after their wedding, like within days. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that it has got to that. But yeah. that's just because they were put through the grinder. And then coming out of it, they were like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. And that in itself is a whole nother world in cost and and I do genuinely feel that sometimes you're better off cancelling a wedding than going through with it and then sorting it all out afterwards. Like, again, yes, you're going to have considerations as to, oh, my God, cancel the wedding and all this stuff. What are people going to think, feel, say? But you're not doing it for that. Like, this is your life. <laughs> and why, why go? I mean, weddings are expensive enough. So why go through with it or incur that cost to then sort out the cost of unwedding yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I love your words. I know you were thinking correctly what you're trying to use. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. It's like, and again, you, you might, and I'm sure you've seen it countless times where you know that they're just going through with it because they just have to now. They're too far down the road. You can't turn around now. Like, gosh, but you, like, you totally can. And I'm not saying to anyone that, you know, if you're having doubts, like, end it now. But what I am yeah. saying is that if you have those doubts, address what those doubts are. Yeah. Like, don't, you can't step over certain things, especially when it, this is your life. Forget the other person for a second. This is your life. And yeah. do you genuinely want to go through an experience in front of hundreds of people where you know in your head this is not something you now want to do? Yeah. And have had ample opportunity, and this is where personal responsibility should kick in. You have had ample responsibility to convey that. 
Now, I get there is going to be pressure. And it's, it's a difficult decision to make. But then when you go through that, it's 10 times harder now trying to undo it. Yeah, <clears throat> and, that, and that, you know, and that's a whole nother level of stigma, opinions, and people coming in and saying, "Oh my God, now what happened? You right. spent so much on the wedding, <laughs> you know." But yeah. all, all those conversations, and it's like, why? I find it, I, I find it fascinating, just you know, observing that behavior in individuals and saying, "Well, how can we go through, put ourselves through something, knowing that the impact it's having going through it." And then take the hits afterwards. So yeah. what, what compels us to carry on with it versus actually just pressing pause and saying, let's deal with this now? Yeah. See, um, this is the, exactly the whole point is going on what you've just said. I'm, you know, sort of got five or six people at the moment um, that I'm sort of not mentoring, but just because I, I've built a banter with them and I did their weddings and so on. And some of them have been married a, a, a good few years and so on. And they all want to, unfortunately, you know, uh, sort of uh, go through a divorce or sign for a divorce or whatever it is. And when I'm asking these couples, um, why do you want to go through a divorce and what's the reason? No one has told me that they don't love each other. Mm. Okay. One has told me that they don't care for each other. So when I ask them, can you give me just one reason? Just give me one reason. How weird is it that 90% of my couples, the reason they want to have a divorce is because of external factors. And that could be something as small as I don't get along with my mother-in-law, I don't get along with my sister, da, 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 da. my husband don't back me up, my wife doesn't back me up. And, and I think this is where we are going wrong. And I'm not saying going wrong because it's not just social media. Um, and again, I'm sorry to say this, but programs such as ZTV, Sony TV, guys, it's it's a it's a it's a series, okay? That it's it's fake. <laughs> so please, <laughs> it's fake, okay? So, so same as EastEnders as well. Like, uh, that doesn't yeah, work either. So parents, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, they think that's the right thing to do, and that's the way you have to behave as a mother-in-law. <laughs> And, but and also, just, just to step in on that, I, I also think it's also down to the individual that's at the effect of it to take responsibility and say, do you know what? I get that this is your expectation, but how about this is the relationship that we create, not what we see on a TV show where an exaggerated, embellished view of this whole soap opera drama happens where there's compliance, there's this, there's subservience, but actually isn't the more powerful thing for the evil mother-in-law, so to speak, to have a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and be responsible for building that relationship versus yeah. this is what I had to deal with when I got married. So this is just the next in the chain of command. Yeah. And, and, rather, and, it's, and again, it's difficult. I'm not saying by any means that it's easy. And similarly, you know, it's the same from the guy's perspective when you've got to create relationships with your in-laws as well. But, it's you just have to say right you know what this doesn't work for me yeah so let's create something together that works for both of us yeah and People not just and not take the hits yeah i think that's i think you know what that's these are the sort of things where we need to um we need to break that habit you know we need to make that change and and I'm, I'm i'm hoping guys you know look thank you so much for joining but i'm i'm hoping that this helps because this is the whole reason uh, for this life is, is is to make you understand you know i'm sure some of you are married some of you might be getting married girlfriend boyfriend whatever hopefully it is, we've but... not ended any marriages today no i don't think we have <laughs> i think you know what this is there's there's more to come but yeah. you know i think um I'm, I'm i'm hoping that this is where they can take a step back you know, and, and understand why they're doing something and the reason behind it, you know, and you're right. It's not easy. The, nothing is easy. Whether you, when you start a new job, it's not easy. You have to go through the, the process of getting to know people to understand what people want, to understand their business needs. So if I'm thinking about it from a business perspective in terms of a relationship, why can't we transform that and use that business perspective in a marriage life 
You know, mm. it, is, it is going through the processes, but understand each other's needs as if you're going to understand a business need and where your target audience is. You 100%. Know, understand what you want to do. And then once you understand each other's needs, you know, that's going to go on very well to the next thing I'm going to say later on. But when you understand your own needs and someone else's needs, you will actually be a lot more happier because you, you doesn't matter what people say, nothing's going to affect you because yeah. you know as a couple what you want, what your needs are, you know? And I yeah. think that's where, where people are going wrong. You know, I can see, you know, someone here, um, <clears throat> I just mentioned Guljit. Uh, yeah, Pierre's drama, those dramas are the ones that people play out in their life. Uh, trust me, mate. Uh, or uh, trust me, Guljit, I see it every single week. When I yeah. do weddings, and I see people the way they act around the stage, I, I, I actually think, oh my God, this is not going to work. And I don't mean any bad to anyone. But I, I, you see how much conflict and tension there is in families. Where How weird is it? They're not even married yet. And already the conflict and tension has started between the mother and the mother-in-law and, and, and so on. So no, I, I completely agree. I think people need to... Um, yeah. And, and that's Samuel's point as well, actually. Got, you know... <laughs> Do you think we sometimes unnecessarily complicate things? Are you building relationships with the in-laws? I totally, uh, yeah, I think just that whole thing. Why do we start to build relationships when we move into someone's house? Or why, True. again, it's two sides of the coin. Like, you know, if, if so, you know, typically it's, it's the girl that moves in with the in-laws. So there's a collective responsibility there. It's not just for, you've now come into our house and so you must now abide by our rules. Because I think that's totally outdated. Yeah. But I also think that the responsibility has to be on the other side and say, look, this is just how we do things here. And yeah. let's find a way to make it work for everyone, not our way or the highway. Because guess what? What's going to happen? Look, it's not going to look. That, <laughs> it's not going to happen. It. It's not. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And, you know, so I'm just going to the point. There's nothing wrong with, you know, we do complicate things because, that's just who we are. Like, guys, we need to you chill know, out, man. There's one thing. <laughs> I know one couple, um, when I asked them, oh, well, you know, how, did, um, how did you get together? And, oh, how did you propose? And he's like, I didn't propose. She did. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. Why does it have to be the guy? <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure trying to get this thing right, man. Take some of that off of us. But if you think it's I nearly the right burned the house down for mine, it can turn into oh, a sauna. That's, that's another, that's another, that's another live conversation. I know, I had the fire extinguisher ready just in case. There are story, we might have to do another live one. Right. But you know, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that, you know. So, yeah, that's, you know, there's, there's nothing fixed. That's, that's what my main, what I want you to take away from this. The one thing is there is no, nothing on paper saying this is the way you should be having a relationship. This is what should be done. There's nothing like that. So I don't know why people follow this rule when there are no rules. You know, you're making Who came up, up with the rules? Who came up with up. them? What rules are we following? Where do they come from? Um, Correct. Do we even yeah. understand them? Yeah. Like that's, okay. that's Pankita's point as well, actually. Sometimes people don't have patience to work out, particularly in arranged <laughs> marriages, and sometimes they do not open up to each other. Well, there you go. It's like, if, you know, if you're not, you, that doesn't work. It's like rock, paper, scissors doesn't work when you've got two rocks. You need some of that overlap, you know? Like, um, but again, I, I don't know if you were here earlier, like with the arranged marriages, that's just the system designed to find the most compatible matches on paper or bio data or whatever they call it. But similarly, in every culture in the world, compatibility is all well and good on paper, but individualism has to kick in. You know, Correct. stats can only give you so much information, but when something's live, you know, it's like in football where they've got this whole money ball thing where they look at the stats of the player and say, right, yeah, this player's going to be good. But as it, you know, when he's on the pitch, you're like, what's he doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'm not going to name right. examples, but, you know, it's yeah, like, no. <laughs> but that's tough. But, but that's the thing. It's like that system isn't wrong. It, at best, it's probably a really, really, really good guide. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's to Olika's point a bit earlier. So I'm still waiting for my Raj. Uh, makes me reconsider marriage completely. But even then, it's like, you know, without Romeo, there's no Juliet. They were both ready. 
and they found yeah. each other. So yeah. you've just got to be ready within yourself to know exactly what it is that you want. And guess what? That vibe is what you're going to attract. Yeah. My headphones are dropping out because that's some serious vibes going through. It. <laughs> Seriously, these beats aren't, aren't what they are. But that's the thing. It's like, that's all it is, is that when you're ready and when you know, you're just going to attract the exact same thing back. And yeah. the moment we outsource our happiness, our fulfillment, we're, we're still operating from there's a lack of something and someone's going to come in and complete me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's dangerous because yeah. guess what? The second they don't complete you anymore, yeah. there, you know, it, it all begins to fall apart because there are these expectations that just aren't going to work. And that's applicable in anything, not just in relationships with people, oh, yeah. but in business and with friends and all that stuff, like, you know, that's, that's just the thing. And that kind of goes back to the point of the, you know, what with the definition of what the relationship is, is where, where two or more people regard and behave towards each other or things that are connected in a state of being connected. So how do you want to be connected with? Yeah. I think that's the ultimate question is what connection is it that you want? And that should be the foundation in which you build a relationship with a like-minded connection in return. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And you know, sort of going on that and, and following what you've just said, you know, one of the things that I've come across recently and I actually spread it, it's like a, how can I put it? Uh, it's like an addiction now for me because I, I actually spread it to all my couples. And when I do, they actually have no idea what I'm talking about. However, when they read up on it, they then realize that, oh, my God, we never knew this This has been around. However, it's been around for so long, but it's just never been taught. And that is um, the five love languages. Mm. You know, I think when I came across the five love languages, oh, my God. You know, it I've is... actually got them on screen here. Have you? Oh, amazing. So, yes, yeah, so have I. <laughs> we Good did nice homework. <laughs> It's the vibe, love it's the vibe. <laughs> How many people know the five love, 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 love languages? Sorry. And yeah, it's a tongue twister, by the way. Um, We've got a master it's, saying it first. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, um, oh, wow. Do you know what? When you know it, you actually realize that what you're trying to do to make someone else happy, it's not working for a reason. Because, because you're doing working. what you think works for you, <laughs> not for the other person. Correct. So, Viraj, are you going to touch up on the five languages? I am going to touch up on the five love languages. Um, so, the first one is, yeah, words of affirmation. You know, we, it's effectively how you communicate to people. Do you encourage them? Do you, you know, words of affirmation, empathy, do you actively listen? The actions that you take, do you send something unexpected, like, you know, something genuine, like a note, a card, or a text? Um, and, you know, the typical things to avoid there are, non-constructive criticism, not reorganizing, not appreciating effort. So again, words of affirmation are just essentially positive reinforcement without any kind of fluff. It's just very genuine. It's just showing your appreciation to another. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some people like that. Some people think that's too woo-woo. And you know, for those who think it's too woo-woo, we do have physical touch, which again, yeah. it's just non-verbal communication. You know, it's body language. It's you know, how do you emphasize love, you know, and that's anything from like holding hands, you know, um, having intimacy as a priority, hugs and kisses and things to avoid. Again, neglect long stints without, you know, any kind of affection or connection. Mm -hmm. um, you've got receiving gifts, which again, just demonstrates thoughtfulness and spontaneity, um, you know, just gestures more so than anything else. And what not what to forget there is, you know that someone's love language is to not send them a gift because that's bad um you know quality time you know uninterrupted focused energy so you know i think that's more energy versus time but you know having that one-to-one -one space is, is crucial um creating moments taking walks disrupting the typical patterns just really when it comes down to the two people there and avoiding distractions when you're doing that you know i think that's the important thing there and then finally, it's acts of service, you know, using phrases like I'll help or, you know, they want to know if you're with them and, you know, if you're, you know, if you're partnering with them. So that's things like 
doing things together typically, you know, whether that's making breakfast or cleaning the house or activities um, and just ways that you can alleviate, you know, your workload with, with someone and, you know, things to avoid and making requests, you know, having a higher priority, lacking that follow through of anything big or small. So, you know, going back to a point that Olika made here is that, so people who end in divorce were not ready or they sent out the wrong white vibe. Things happen for videos and you attract what you need. I think there's an element to that. I think no two, you know, people are always growing. It's people are never going to be fixed in who they are, right? Because at a physiological level, we're always changing. Our cells change every 35 days, you know, our thoughts, whatever we're around has an influence on us. So I feel that people, you know, going back to that, I don't necessarily think to a certain, it depends on how it starts off. If, you know, if the work isn't done before to establish who you are individually and the other person knowing who they are individually, or at least you do some work together to establish that, have your foundation, have your agreements. And then when something changes, it's actually just communicating that and just, you know, peop I'm just going to go in this direction with an area of my life. And that means that I may have less time to do certain things yeah. rather than just kind of doing it. And then the other person feels like, oh, okay, now how am I going to fill my time? And then the yeah. other person does something. And now you come back, and you're like, oh, right, you've not got any time for me anymore. And the other person's like, yeah, but you were busy. Oh, okay, so now we've got no time. Now you've just created this whirlpool all of a sudden where just basic communication wasn't there. Or you're still growing individually, but you don't have any appreciation for the individual journeys. Yeah. You're just walking the path together, but you're doing your individual thing. But then yeah. at the same time, if you're not pivoting back and checking in with the person, the gap just widens. And that's where I feel that people start having this, um, it almost becomes like a one-upmanship of I'm doing this and you're doing this and you're not doing this and you're not doing that. But actually, that's only half the truth. It's great that that's on the table. I think where, from what I've observed, is where people miss out on is by saying, okay, this is how you feel. What can we do to resolve this for you? This is how I feel. How can we resolve this for me? And just have those conversations on top of the arguments because the arguments are actually the best thing because yeah, yeah. that's data just flying out of your mouth of I'm pissed oh. off about this and you've done this. And then I feel that people hear, but they don't listen because again, it becomes, we become very defensive about our own actions, but actually if we just accept that, okay, oh. we just did something consciously or unconsciously that had this impact on the other person. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's just what I did. I yeah. get that this is how it's affected you. How do we now work on this? I feel yeah. that there's, and I think, again, people are under so much pressure to know the right thing, mm. but we're only human. And again, just as Sahil's point is, let's just keep it simple. If I did something, okay, I didn't realize I did that and that annoyed you, I'll be mindful of that. Thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling me. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Done. <laughs> I don't know. That's a really quick way of doing it. But do you know what I mean? I think I really feel that the communication and, again, re I suppose, if anything else, it's just assessing the relationship and saying, look, we're a year into this now. We're two years into this now. We're different people to when we started off. You know, mm -hmm. We're 10 years in. We're 25 years into a marriage. If yeah. 24 were miserable, what have we done in the final year that's actually changed it? Yeah. Because that's still not bad because that 24 years has now created the paradigm for you to shift into something else. But I, I, I think I feel we're too quick to throw things away because they just don't work the way we want it to anymore. And there are, again, the external influences that play into that for sure. But then I, we have yeah. to question if we're, just, if we're not prepared to put in the work on ourselves, how can we expect other people to do that for us? I, I also think, Viraj, is what people tend to do is going back on the 24 years, 25 years, whatever it is, that, that people are more likely, and, and, and I don't know why this is, that they're more likely to focus on the 24 years that have been bad than actually the one year that has been amazing. And the more you're going to think about the 24 years that have been bad, that's what you focus on. All, yeah, all that's going to come is just bad because you're bringing it on yourself because all you're thinking about is the bad moments. Whereas if you think about that one moment, that one year where it was amazing, that's all that can lead up to. That is amazing. Yeah, um, because I you can look at what it took to get there. Yeah. And then, right, okay, better late than never, but there's no late. It's just it, the timing of it is always right. You know, everything is just working for you. So now yeah. you've got that. Now you've got the keys to the kingdom. You're like, right, let's now focus on this because this is what works. Let's not 
focus on the on the problem at the level that it was created at. I just wanted to touch up just on Priya's um, comment. Um, I guess main thing is giving the space. Both are different individuals. They have their likes and dislikes. I just, you're, you're right, Priya. And I think um, what people, especially couples, what they tend to do, and this is touching up on what Vera said earlier, is what they tend to do is they, they tend to think that every little moment that they have, that they have to spend with each other. And this is going back to the five five love languages. Which is can I just, before you go into that, can I also say that that's also quite unhealthy because too that much of something is also a bad thing as well. But yeah, and, carry on. And this is exactly what I was going to say. In terms of going back to what you said, the, one of the five love languages, which is quality time, you're better off actually spending half an hour with someone where they've completely focused on you and the conversation that you're having than spending a whole day with someone when their mind's actually going around and round thinking about other things. You know, so when you give someone your attention for half an hour and that's your full attention, you're going to get a lot more out of that than actually spending a whole day talking about whatever you talk about. Because then you're not actually talking. You're just actually being together, but you're not together, if you know what I mean. So I, I completely agree that I think having your own space, it, it's such an amazing thing because you get to reflect on what's happened and what people don't tend to do. And again, this is not because of the couple. It's the way that we've been taught. It's what our couple, uh, our parents do is every single moment that we have together, it means we're happy. We are together. That doesn't mean anything. You know, you don't know what people are thinking inside. So Priya, I mean, yeah, you're right. Everyone has their own uh, likes and dislikes. And I think uh, as long as you acknowledge them and you, when you're spending time that you actually spend quality time, I'm actually one to blame for that because, you know, I used to give a lot of time, but did I really give time? I didn't because all I kept thinking about was, oh my God, I've got five weddings to do this weekend. So that's not giving time to someone who's actually talking to me, you know, yeah. and that, that has a bounce off because people are going to ask you questions. Oh, do you remember what I said yesterday? That's it. That's a cause for argument because if you don't remember, <laughs> that means you weren't actually there. <laughs> I was saying this for a reason, okay? That there is a reason for this because these are the sort of things. But yeah, no, Priya, thank you very much. That's a great, that's a great point, Priya. Um, and yeah, and do you know, what, even like, you know, even I want to say that you know, Harvey and I, we've been together for uh, 19 years. And I would say the last year and a half has been the one that's tested us the most. And it's funny saying that because I, I, I genuinely feel that for most of that time, we probably didn't actually know ourselves. And now that we're in the process of actually doing some, some stuff to kind of you know, go a bit deeper in who we are individually, it has tested. But rather than getting worked up by that, I think there are days that are a bit like, oh, here we go again. But at the same time, it's like, but this is good stuff because we're now actually dealing with what may potentially have always been in the background that we would, you know, we were always papering over the cracks over. So again, you know, whether you're two years into it or you're nearly 20 years, you know, for myself, I think don't get hung up on the number. I think you've really got to focus on where you are now, because when you're living in nostalgia of how something was, you know, the honeymoon period or, you know, when we first got together, it was like this, you're setting yourself up to fail because Attraction is very different to compatibility. Correct. Attraction is just that superficial, not superficial, but that initial kind of spark that kind of gets you together and it's all really nice. But then when the work starts to happen is can you, can you create those moments yeah. as well as do the work? And I think there are times where, again, you, you're going to have these sort of ups and downs where there are going to be times where the sparks are flying and there are times where you've just got to do more work. But at the same time, if you start relating to it as this is, oh, this is hard work. Well, guess what? You're just now going to create more hard work. But if you just stay, for me, I think what, where I'm at is I'm just fascinated by my discovery of myself and how I can bring that into it. And yes, is that going to change something? Of course it is. Because again, the paths are kind of, you know, it's not just a straight linear path. There's going to be some of like that. There's going to be some of like that. But then... It's how do, I, how do I bridge the gap? How do I communicate that? 
And how do I need to support either way? So it's, you know, it's not just this straight linear line that we talk about, but there's going to be pivots along the way. And to your point, I think that's, that's what we just need to be aware of is that we got to give up this whole romantic notion of, you know, what we see in the movies, because whilst that can happen and it's rare, we're just setting ourselves up to fail if we're just comparing ourselves to what we see on the screen. But actually what we can control is who we're being in that space for ourselves and therefore how we're contributing to the other person. Because then, guess what? You're going to reciprocate back. You know, whether that's with a partner or whether that's with your in-laws or whether that's with your friends, it's, you know, you're putting, it's what you put out and it's the boomerang effect. It's that same thing's going to come right back at you. And there's just, don't be afraid to do that because that, this is your life. And we don't realize individually how powerful we actually are. No, and but that's because we're consumed by everyone else. Yes, but actually <laughs> we can positively influence everyone else by knowing what it is that we actually want and just communicating that yeah. in a positive, constructive way. And just and I think just be there to listen for what the other person has to say. And again, now that the cards are on the table, it's let's look at this, let's create some agreements, let's move forward now, let's not communicate between the lines where I say something and the other person's going to assume something and then assumptions are flying around. But mm -hmm. just cold, not cold, but just straight communication. What is it that works and why does it work for you? Why doesn't this work for you? And let's figure out what we do. Because again, yeah, in business, it's the same thing. It's when you're having a negotiation, you're not just kind of going to, well, I kind of want this. And the other person, I kind of want that. Okay, cool. Let's do this deal. It yeah. just doesn't work that way because you've just got to be straight and clear as to what works for both sides. Which doesn't happen in relationship, which, which is, you're right. In, you know, this is why it's so weird. People know what they need to do because they already do it. Yeah? They already do it in where they work. Unfortunately, we don't sort of use that strategy and I shouldn't say strategy, but we don't use that when we're working on our own relationship. And I think what I mean about people's um, uh, judgment and so on, it, you know, guys and, and girls, you know, there's nothing wrong with loving yourself. You know, you have to love yourself because if you don't, then every, when you're sharing love and, and spreading love, unfortunately, I'm not saying that's fake love but you can't spread love if you don't love yourself. And I think when people always think about themselves and when people talk to their cousins or their friends or their whatever it is, and they say, okay, it's about me today. The reason why people don't say that is because they're worried about what someone else is going to think because they think, oh, do you know what? That's a bit selfish. It's not selfish, guys, yeah? I was watching something and this is how, how this one person, individual, get to another level where I was watching first dates. I know, sorry. I was watching, I have to watch these things. See, it gives me a lot of inspiration of how to make, make my weddings more lavish, should I say. Um, I was watching first dates and um, one of the, 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 when the guy walked in and the girl was sitting at the bar and the guy looked at the, at the, the woman's hands, the lady's hands and said, you're wearing a ring. And she goes, yes. And he goes, well, you're on first date. Are you married? And she goes, yes, I'm married. And the first thing he said, I hope your husband knows that you're here. She goes, my husband, I'm not married to my husband. I did a whole wedding. She all got, arranged a whole wedding to get married to herself. Okay. There were only a hundred people, but she married herself because she realized that all this time she hasn't loved herself. Now she actually loves herself she wanted to do something with herself which is what made her go on first dates is because she actually loved herself now that she can actually share that love with another human being that is the extreme that this person went to because she didn't care about what everyone else is going to think she was still wearing a ring if she cared what other people were going to think she would not be wearing a ring on first dates and you, you know, know what that's totally a selfless thing <laughs> because now she's made herself more available to other people and yeah. being oh, able yeah. to give that much more to other people because she just has that within herself and just recognized that that was within her and just went through this process to get to that 
So now right. when she finds someone, it's going to be amazing because that's the abundance that she has and that's what's going to fly out. Correct. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, amazing. And, you know, I, I mean, just, you know, one thing I do want to say, guys, is, you know, when you are in a relationship and when you're in the process of getting married, and this is very important because, again, I see this a lot. When I ask people, oh, um, oh, you seem like you're very happy, you talk a lot and, and everything else. And, and you know what? It's weird because when you're planning a wedding, you are going to talk every single day, every single second. And the weird thing it's kind is, of like when you're married anyway. Well, well, <laughs> this is OK. So this is the thing. Um, I say to my couples, there's one thing I always say to my clients, please take one day in a week, not one day in a month, take one day in a week and do what you love doing. OK. And they keep asking me what we do. And I'm like, well, do you? Because what happens is you tend to talk every day, every second, and it's all, all wedding related. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, so you've got nine months, 10 months of planning a wedding, nine, 10 months, you are the closest you've ever been because you have to, right? Because you're talking about wedding, 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 meeting suppliers, wedding, 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 wedding. Food tasting, okay. that's good. Food, yeah, food tasting is the best part of it. It's the best part of it. And, and, and come and see me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens? You get married, okay? So again, on the wedding day, all you're doing is talking about that day. Then you go on honeymoon. And what tends to happen, the first two, three days, because you're so tired, you tend to just sleep it off. When you do wake up, what are you talking about? Wedding. Because you're talking about, all right? You're talking about... <laughs> I so relate to this. <laughs> did you meet these people? Did you meet this one? This was my person. This was this person. This what person didn't turn up. How could they not turn up? Oh. Okay, right? So what people forget, you're married now. You don't need to talk about the wedding. That's not a problem. But don't spend your whole yeah. honeymoon thinking about wedding because that's yeah. all you're doing. But that's not your fault because that's all you know because that's mm. all you have. Then you finally come home after your lovely, lovely honeymoon. And then what happens? You have to go to family's houses for dinner as a couple. So what do you talk about? Wedding. Okay, so this whole wedding thing lasts such a long time that I think when it does stop, you then think and you look at each other and think, what do we talk about? Because mm. yeah, that's where people forget to take that step back and understand. That's what I mean by understand what attracted to each other to you. You know who, why you're attracted to each other. What yeah. did you do before you got married? What did you do? What excited you? Okay. Yeah, get everything else. So that's one thing that I just want to leave you guys with is you know. Take that step back. Understand the going out process. Understand the dating process and enjoy it. You know, it's not all about wedding. I know there was one comment and I'm sorry about who left that comment. But um, the comment was that um, the, the wedding is, you know, just a, a one day thing. A, a relationship, a marriage is forever. Yes. You're right. Okay. A so wedding I, is a day. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think you're right. I think as often as we can, the work needs to be done, but go back to what it was like when you first started. Recreate those moments because those are the lighter moments in the relationship that help take the pressure, has that fun, and just mixes it up a little. And yes, you know, there's going to be conversations about cleaning the house and finances and what's coming up later, all about the future. But yeah. it's the now. You know, what are you creating in the now that's going to actually, those are the building blocks of your relationship. Correct. Forget the anxiety that whatever is you know in the future or whatever's happened before, like that's gone now. You can't change. You actually, if anything, you you have no effect on the past or the future. But what you can yeah. do is what you bring into the now. And the Correct. more moments that you have where you know you understand whether you understand the love languages or not, but sometimes just going to a movie and just having a night out can just take the sting out of everything. Like just have those moments, and yeah. I think that just keeps it keeps it fresh. Sure. Dude, this has been awesome. I'm, we've has been, been going awesome. for an hour and 20 minutes. I just want to say thank you so much. You know, I'm so grateful that all of you guys have actually taken the time out to actually join the live. Um, it is a Saturday. You should be anywhere else that you've decided to, you know, even if it was just for half an hour. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, 
you know, for taking the time out to actually join me and Viraj. And, you know, I have to say thank you, Viraj, for allowing me to use this platform to um, and do it together because this is something that was on my mind and it's really weird how you reached out and we both thought about the same thing. Yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. No, dude, I'm, I'm really grateful to you. Like, we've had some amazing conversations in the past about this very subject and and this was something that I just wanted to bring and yeah, and I, I couldn't have thought of anyone better. And you know, I really, really do actually just want to acknowledge you for what you do and the sincerity and the genuinity that you do it with people because I know that you've you've taken the financial hit on a few occasions for telling the truth. And yeah. <laughs> you know, and that that takes that says something about you that you have put other people's interests ahead of a few thousand pounds that could have gone a long way for you, but you know, you're a people person and that's, that's pretty incredible. And you know, I really, really do acknowledge you for that. No, thank you. Cheers very much. Cool, man. And, yeah. Thank you for everyone. And thank else. you so much for everyone for joining in, you know, your comments and, you know, all the waves and all the likes and, you know, and everything it's, it's been phenomenal. And you know, I, our, our intent here was to really provide some, some different viewpoints, value and insights. So I, I hope we did. I'd love for you guys to catch the replay. My headphones are still falling out, but there we go. <laughs> but thank you guys so much and have an amazing, amazing weekend and keep commenting. And, you know, Sa um, Saga and I are going to be looking at the feed and answering any questions you have as well. So uh, really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Take care. Main thing is share. Share the video. Share. Share the yes, video. please. Bye. Share it with anyone. Bye connect with us online like you know we're we're here like you know we're always a message away so yeah, share the video guys thank <laughs> you very much thanks Viraj take care bro yes, yeah. buddy. Take bye bye bye, -bye.